Honourable Adam Searle. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. Uh, I rise to make a contribution in this debate. Uh, this no confidence motion directed to the Treasurer and the I Care Board. And my colleague, the Honourable Daniel Mookie, has comprehensively set out the case against the Treasurer and the Board on account of the mismanagement of the Workers' Compensation Scheme, a case that has not substantively been answered by the Government. This week, the performance of the Treasurer was described by the Leader of the Government as outstanding. A better description would have been astounding or even shocking. And this, these two descriptions apply uh, as well to the way in which this government has chosen to respond to the very serious matters uh, that have been outlined and laid at the Treasurer's door. The government so far has chosen to respond by attacking the Labor Party and its motivations, uh, engaging in a hagiography of the Treasurer, but has failed to address the very serious and specific matters that have been raised in this debate, except in the most general way. Mr President, this shows that in their hearts, those opposite know the Treasurer has failed in his duty, his duty to injured workers in this state, to the 360,000 businesses that depend upon a proper system of workers', co workers compensation and insurance, and indeed to the wider community. Now, the Finance Minister says that this motion is simply designed to undermine confidence in the Treasurer at a time when the economy is in a recession and we're in the middle of a pandemic. But in fact, Mr President, it is the Treasurer's own failures and his and the government's intransigence, its refusal to accept real responsibility for the failures that have been outlined here, that is undermining public confidence uh, in the government, in the Treasurer and indeed in the scheme. If they were serious, Mr President, uh, they would take that responsibility and do so in a serious manner. Uh, the Minister for Finance was trying to advance the claim that the scheme that exists today is somehow a better scheme than the one it replaced. At a time when this has got the lowest level of financial and medical benefits for, uh, for injured workers seen in a generation, uh, when the current scheme doesn't support workers as long as they're injured, Instead, there are harsh time limits and arbitrary and dishonest impairment thresholds that artificially cut people off who still need medical treatment, throwing tens of thousands of injured workers on the scrap heap. Uh, despite this, uh, the, the minister still claims uh, this scheme is somehow an improvement. And uh, the, um, the parliamentary secretary was saying, look, uh, this underpayment of workers, it's not the fault of eye care, it's a fault of Piawi. Well, of course, Piawi was a creation of this government in the 2011-2012 reforms. So the responsibilities cannot be uh, avoided by this government. Uh, these problems uh, have existed for some time. And again, the government simply hasn't responded to the charges that have been laid at the Treasurer's door. The 52,000 workers underpaid $80 million, the biggest example of wage theft uh, seen uh, in, in this state. No defence of that. Only, uh, only an allegation, oh, well, some people have been overpaid as well. Yeah, but what are you doing about the underpayment and how did it happen? Um, the declining return to work rates. The increased costs of treatment, driven in part by poor claims management, which is leading to a very serious deterioration in scheme finances, both general scheme finances and, indeed, uh, the Honourable Daniel Mookie has outlined the $4 billion bailout of the Treasury managed fund. That is the fund the government maintains itself as essentially a self-insurer. Bereft of funds to the degree where at two minutes to midnight on the 30th of June, uh, the Treasurer is still dithering about the bailout of the fund. Um, now, a bonus is paid to 200 staff. Now, usually bonuses are only paid when you meet or exceed expectations when the financial management of an enterprise is soaring like an eagle. But in this government, bonuses are paid when the scheme finances are driven into the ground and when all the performance indicators are heading south, not north. Uh, just extraordinary. Uh, the Honourable Mark Latham referred to the $800,000 contract uh, awarded to the wife of the former CEO. What is extraordinary is there's no acknowledgement by the government that this is a real issue. And the Minister for Finance, the minister responsible for public procurement of the state, was unable to assure this House, either in question time yesterday or in this debate, that 
those procurement guidelines were followed in that case. He had a perfect opportunity. What is he doing? He's hiding behind the McDougall report or inquiry that won't report for over a year. Again, another example of where this government, despite repeated opportunities, fails to show contrition or even an acceptance that there is an accountability requirement to the parliament or even to the wider community. We've seen the awarding of multi-million dollar contracts tainted by conflicts of interest not disclosed at the time those contracts were awarded and entered into. A tax by iCare on the regulator meant to oversee it. A tax on the regulator for trying to do its job. A tax on whistleblowers, a tax of the most disgraceful kind, <laughs> on whistleblowers within the organisation. This is not one failure or two failures or three failures. There is a welter of not just failures, but of a comprehensive um, dropping of the bundle when it comes to uh, fulfilling its responsibilities. The list just goes on. And this is before we get to the issue of using iCare's finances to fund political positions in the Treasurer's Ministerial Office. And I'll come to the issue of the secondment. Yes, it is uh, practice for governments to second persons to their office with knowledge and expertise in certain areas. But the particular individual that we're talking about never worked a day in his life in iCare. He was a staffer in the Treasurer's political office for two years before he obtained employment at iCare. And did he go off from the Treasurer's office to iCare? Did he have a desk? Did he have a swipe pass to get into the building? No, he stayed in the Treasurer's office. Uh, even when the whole th pack of cards came down, did he go back to iCare? I don't think so. He didn't have a desk there. The fact is that was not a secondment. That was a complete sham designed to circumvent the rules on ministerial office budgets. Clear as the nose on your face. What was iCare doing funding the receptionist in the Treasurer's ministerial office? I mean, that, this just doesn't bear any level of scrutiny and there is no indication by the Treasurer or those opposite, there's no understanding that any of this is somehow either serious or is wrong. And that is perhaps the most disturbing thing in this debate. No acceptance of responsibility, no acceptance that this is not acceptable. If you went out and found someone uh, in Macquarie Street or in Phillips Street and you acquainted them with these facts and said, does this sound legit to you? I guarantee you nobody would accept any of these, uh, any of these facts. And what's disturbing in this debate, as we have yet to, see, to hear, anything resembling an actual defence of any of these matters. Yes, there's, there's a bit of smoke being blown at the Treasurer about what a great bloke he is. Uh, and yes, there's the traditional political attacks on the opposition for having the temerity to try and hold the government to account on these multiple, multiple and very serious failures. But no one's come to terms with any of these matters. No one's given a plausible or even um, uh, a passing acceptance uh, a, a description, uh, an explanation of, of why these matters taken together do not justify this motion. Mr President, this motion is justified, if only because the Treasurer has no understanding that he is in any way to blame. Yes, he mouthed the words on, on ABC radio yesterday, but he doesn't accept responsibility. This government doesn't accept responsibility. And very disturbingly, they don't actually think they've done anything wrong. They don't think the Treasurer's done anything wrong, and neither does he. And if for no other reason, that is why this motion is important. That is why this House should signal its discontent in the way that the motion is framed. Uh, the Honourable Trevor Carr.